Hello and welcome to this video on equations for proportional relationships. Now let's just suppose that I'm riding Pip and the Cat and I want to make it to these mountains. And I've got a fixed amount of time in which I want to travel as far as I can to these mountains. Now let's just suppose that my speed on Pip and the Cat was 30 kilometers per hour. And let's just say that that got me 60 kilometers. Now what would happen if I was to say half my speed? If I was to half the speed, well, I would only travel half as far, so I would travel 30 kilometers. Or what about if I was to triple the speed? If I tripled the speed to 90 kilometers per hour, I would also triple the distance covered, so it would be 180 kilometers. Now you may notice that we have the same scale factor between speed and distance in each case. If I multiply the speed by two, I happen to get the distance. You can see that's times by two, 15 to 30, that's times by two, 90 to 180, that's times by two. So we could express the distance traveled y in terms of the speed x. So in this particular case, the distance traveled is two times the speed. And this video is all about working out equations for proportional relationships, some more complicated than this. Now, do you remember from the previous videos that if two quantities are directly proportional to each other, if I was to say triple one value, then I would also triple the other. So we say that y is proportional to x, and we actually have a way of writing the fact that y is directly proportional to x. We write this, so it's y is directly proportional to, so it looks a bit like the Greek letter alpha, but it's not quite. It's kind of like this fish type symbol, x. So y is directly proportional to x. And when that happens, you can always write y as some number times x. In this case, we determined that that number was two. But in general, when these two things are directly proportional, there's some scale factor between x and y. And that scale factor is k, which we worked out was two. So this value k is known as the constant of proportionality. So it's the scale factor between the two variables, x and y. So that means whenever you see the words is directly proportional to, you could replace it with equals k, because we've got y, y, is directly proportional to equals k times x, and we've got x. So let's use that to answer these first few questions. So we've got y is directly proportional to x. So we could write y is directly proportional to equals k times x. So we can write that. And we don't know what the k is yet, but we can use these provided values to work out what k is. So it tells us when x is 4, y is 12. So when x is 4, y is 12. Well, if we just substitute that into the equation we have so far, we get y, which is 12, is equal to k times, k times, x. x is 4. Now, if 12 is k times 4, clearly k is going to be 3. 3 times 4 is 12. So we know that k is 3. So we've answered the first question. Find the formula for y in terms of x. Well, we've got y equals kx, but we know what k is now. We know that k is 3. So our formula is y equals 3x. So the y value is 3 times the x value, which we can clearly see from here. 12 is 3 times as big as 4. Now that we have the complete formula, we can use it on other known values of x. So for example, when x is 6, determine y. So if x is 6, we just feed that through our formula. So the y value is equal to 3 times the x value, 3 times 6, which is equal to 18. What about the second question? This is a bit harder. y is directly proportional to the square of x. And a mistake that a lot of students make is that they don't notice these extra words, like the square of x. And if you don't notice that word there and just do y is directly proportional to x, you'll get no marks for an exam question at all. So let's express that. Uh, y is proportional to, well, let's write the, the kind of fishy symbol first. Y is proportional to the square of x, so x squared. Square of x means x squared. So do you remember that we can always replace that little symbol with equals k times. So we could just write y is directly proportional to equals k times the square of x, x squared. So I wouldn't bother writing this top line to be honest, I'll go straight for this. Y is directly proportional to x squared. And that's the three components of our equation. Now, just like we did before, we use these known values to work out what k is because we don't have our complete formula until we know what k is. So when x is three, y is 18. So let's sub those values in. So 
y, which is 18, is equal to k, which we don't know yet, times x squared, that's 3 squared, which is 9. So what times 9 is 18? Well, we can clearly see that k is 2. So now that we know that k is 2, we've got the complete formula. We know that y equals kx squared is 2x squared. So there we go. That's our formula. So we want to find out what y is when x is 5. Now we can just use our complete formula. So when x is 5, that means that y is equal to 2 times 5 squared. And you remember that 2x squared means 2 times x squared. It doesn't mean 2x squared. So we've got 2 times 25, which is 50. Now for question 3, it says that y is inversely proportional to x. Now previously, if we saw the words is directly proportional to, we could replace that with equals k times. Now, similarly, if you see is inversely proportional to, you can write equals k divided by. So you can see the difference there. So let's try and represent this. Y is inversely proportional to y is equal to k over, and then it says to x. So if it was y is directly proportional to x, we write y equals k times x, inversely proportional to y equals k over x. And by the way, if we were writing this with the kind of fishy type symbol, we'd write y is proportional to 1 over x. Now that might seem a bit strange, but remember we can replace the fish symbol with equals k times. So if we do that, we get y equals k times 1 over x, what we got there. And k times 1 over x is just k over x, which is what we have here, which is why we can write it like this. But you never really need to write this, it's just that if they use that in an exam question, you need to be able to recognise that as meaning y is inversely proportional to x. So let's use our values. We got when x equals 4, y is 3. So if we sub that in, y is 3 is equal to k over 4. Now k is being divided by 4, so to undo the divide by 4 times both sides by 4 and that gives you k is equal to 12. So now we have our complete formula. y is equal to 12, because k is 12, over x. That's our formula. And now we can use that to work out subsequent values of y for different values of x. So determine y when x is 6. So if x was equal to 6, that means y is equal to 12 over 6. We just sub it in, and that is equal to 2. What about the fourth one? y is inversely proportional to the square root of x. So let's take each of these words and turn them into an equation. y, y, is inversely proportional to, we write equals k over, and then the square root of x. Don't forget the word square root. The square root of x we can write as that, can't we? So then we use these given values to work out k, so we can complete our formula. When x is 4, y is 12, so let's put that in. We sub that in, we get y, which is 12, equals k over the square root of x. Well, the square root of 4 is 2. So we times both sides by 2, that gives us k is equal to 24. So we've got our formula now, y is equal to k, which is 24, over the square root of x. And then we can use that with subsequent values of x. So determine x when y is 8. So y is 8, so we make y 8. 8 equals 24 over root x. Now, do you remember the swapsy trick? If you're dividing by something which has the x in it, we can always swap what we're dividing by and the result. Just like, for example, for example, if I had 8 divided by 4 equals 2, you know you can swap the 4 and the 2 to get 8 divided by 2 equals 4. So we're swapping the thing we're dividing by and the result. I call this the swapsy trick. So we could swap here the root x and the 8, which gives us root x is equal to 24 over 8, which is clearly 3. And therefore, if root x is equal to 3, to get rid of the square root, we square both sides and that will give us x is equal to 9. So that is the final answer. What about question 5? We've got y is directly proportional to 1 over x cubed. And another way of saying that is y is inversely proportional to x cubed. 
So if we have one over, that means inversely proportional to. So we can just replace that fish symbol with equals k times. So y equals k times one over x cubed. And because k we could write over one, that gives us k over x cubed. So we've got our formula, y is equal to k over x cubed. And then we want to complete the table. So we know when x is two, y is five. So when x is two, y is five sub those values into this. So y, which is 5, is equal to k over x cubed. 2 cubed is 8. Multiply both sides by 8. k is equal to 40. So that gives us our completed formula of y equals k, which we worked out was 40, over x cubed. Don't forget to write x cubed. Do not write x. And then, let's finish off, well, when x is 0 0.1, what is y? So when x is 0 0.1, we just sub it in. We get y is equal to 40 over 0 0.1 cubed. And let's just put that in our calculator. 40 divided by 0 0.1 cubed is equal to 40,000. So that's the answer. Now, the last thing to do is to recognise graphs for y is proportional to x, y is proportional to x squared, etc. So let's try and draw these one by one. So firstly, y is proportional to x. Now, remember, we can replace this is proportional to symbol with equals k times. So y equals k times x, y equals kx. Now, how do we draw that? Well, if you think back to what we've learned about straight line graphs, we know the general equation of a line is y equals mx plus c. And you may know that the m means the gradient of the line, and the c is the y-intercept. If you don't know that, then I highly recommend you view those videos first. So if we look at this, what is the gradient and what is the y-intercept? Well, the gradient is the value in front of the x. The m, the gradient, is the value in front of the x. So the gradient is equal to k. And what's the y-intercept? What's the plus c? Well, effectively, we got plus zero. So the y-intercept is equal to zero. So that means it cuts the y-axis at zero, and we've got a gradient of k. Well, we don't know what k is. It could be two, it could be three, but it's going to look like this, isn't it? That will be a sketch of y equals kx. And that's sort of consistent with our idea of these two things being directly proportional. If we were to double x, so let's just say we had x as 1, you can see what the y value is, it's this y value here. But if we were to double that x value to 2, then you can see it also doubles the y value, which is consistent with what we know about directly proportional relationships. Let's do the other one. So we've got y is directly proportional to x squared, where we can replace that proportional symbol with equals k times, it'll be y equals kx squared. That's a quadratic equation. And if we were to sketch that, let's just say that k was 1 for simplicity. We have y equals x squared, it has this kind of shape here. What about y is inversely proportional to x? Or another way of saying that y is directly proportional to 1 over x. Well, we know we can replace that with y equals k over x. And if you study different types of curved graphs, you'll know that this is known as a reciprocal graph. So it could be, for example, that k is 1, we've got y equals 1 over x. And the graph looks like this. If you haven't seen that video, I recommend you watch that first. And the very last one, y is proportional to 1 over x squared. Again, we could write that as y equals k over x squared. Now, this one is a bit similar to this. We can see we've got over x something. But note that whenever you square something, it's always positive. If you had a negative number squared, negative squared is positive because negative times negative is positive, And positive squared is positive. Positive times positive is positive. So the y value is always going to be positive. So provided that k is positive. So it's actually going to look like this, and that's definitely one to memorise. And that completes our set of graphs.